Welcome to a new episode of Ride Along. Today we're going to meet one of the founding partners of Namitala and Seguia Advocates, Mr. Seguia Paul. Today we're going to learn what it took for a young man in Uganda, a young lawyer, to start his own law firm and to run a successful business here in Kampala. So come along with me. I'd like to welcome Segi to this ride along with me. Um, and uh, yeah, so Segi is a lawyer and he's uh, a founding partner of the uh, law firm Namital and Seguia Advocates. And we'd like to thank him for joining us today. Thank you, Linda. I've been a practicing lawyer. This is my fifth year of uh, practicing as an advocate of the High Court, uh, but graduated from LDC in 2013. Law Development Center, that's where we do the BACOS uh, exam from. Okay. Uh, and uh, where did you work first, right after uh, LDC? Uh, right after LDC, I worked at Opportunity Bank as a legal officer there mm. uh, for one year. And uh, after one year, I was requested by the bank to start the compliance department. So I began the compliance department at Opportunity Bank and uh, also worked in that capacity for one year and two months. And where did you live? Uh, well, I had always had the passion of practicing law in, uh, in a law firm okay. setting and not, not in a bank setting. Uh, so I had, I had a dream of always practicing, you know, uh, doing my litigation and serving different clients with different issues. Mm. Uh, so that is why I left the bank. The bank, you, I only had one client, and that client was the bank. Yeah. But in a law firm, you have more, you than, have one more than one client. And where did you go after? So after Uganda. Opportunity Bank, mm. I briefly went to Kampala Associated Advocates, but I had always had a dream uh, of going to Sebalu and Lule Advocates, mm. because that is where I had done my internship or we call it clerkship yeah so i had always wanted uh, to go to sebalu and Lule. so shortly after joining kampala associated advocates i got an opportunity to actually uh, go to the dream farm uh, so that was 2015. how long were you there for well i was in my dream farm for about nine months okay that is when i got the opportunity to start a law firm with a partner of mine. I had always had a dream of starting a law firm, so the opportunity came and uh, I had a partner who was willing to start with me then. Mm. Uh, and so we said, why not? Let's, let's have a go at it. Yes. So now you find this partner. What was like the starting point? Because I mean, starting any company or any firm is like very expensive. So did you guys save up? Did you get a, an investment loan? Like how did you start up? From where did, did you hire people? Like exactly how did you start? Because now you have your dream. Someone else has approached you, start a farm. How do you start? Uh, first of all, we had, we had, as the two of us met before in the year and talked about this dream that mm. I had, uh, my partner also had the same dream. So when it was time for us to act on the dream, we actually shared uh, this dream with some people. Uh, mm. And someone uh, offered uh, to give us the capital that we needed to start, you know, uh, an amount of money that we needed to start to set up, uh, to get location, to get office space, to get furniture, and, you know, generally get started. When you say give, was it the person give you, invest, lend? I would like to say lend because the person, uh, one, mm -hmm. has, uh, did not ask for an interest on the money. Yeah. Uh, the person didn't ask for a specific time within which the money must be paid. Mm. Uh, it's more of, the, I have this money, you can use it to start. Mm. You guys will pay it back oh, whenever you can pay it back. So here you are, you've started your farm. Yes. You have financing for your farm. Yes. Everything is exciting. Mm. 
So what is the reality of when you actually started the farm, finding clients, how did that go about? Well, for us it was uh, a major step of faith. Yeah. Because ordinarily people start uh, when they have clients, when they know where money is going to come from. Mm. Uh, for us it was a thing of let us start and let's see what God will do with our starting. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't particularly have clients uh, that we were going to work with. We we hoped to get clients. Mm. So we set up. And of course, after you have set up, when people hear that you have set up, they now begin to trust you uh, to give you work that they probably were not giving you because you are in someone else's law firm. Yeah. But now when they hear that, oh, he is actually in his own law firm, I think I can give him this. I can give him this contract. I can give him this agreement. I can give him this transaction. So with people knowing that we are actually out there, mm. uh, they began to trust us slowly by slowly, uh, giving us work to do. Um, how do clients, um, how do you build clients as lawyers? Is there like a scales fee that you get from the association or something like or every law firm just chooses how it chooses to build build clients? Well, we have uh, what we call the advocates remuneration rules, mm. uh, fees and rules. So it provides for uh, different services that we provide to our clients and how we should bill for them. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, it's not it's not it's not uh, it's not one of those things that uh, a rule. the practice. Uh, follows to the letter. It's like a guide. Yeah, it's a guide. It's, it's a, a guide. guide. Um, but mostly, really, as as you do work for different people, mm. you can judge on how to charge the, the different people in different capacities. You know, for us, uh, being a startup law firm, we have been dealing with startup companies, companies and clients. Yeah, so. We and would, does that pay well doing a startup companies? No, just, because they are also just starting up. Mm. There is just so much they can give you. Yeah. So for us, what the idea is is volumes. Mm. How many uh, startup companies work can you do mm. that will influence how much in the end you get? Mm. Yeah. So it's not like if a farm is if a company is already established, one off company can pay you and. That's all you need for the rest of the month. For us, it would be how many, how many, how many do you deal with? So you've you've been in practice for more than a year, mm. and uh, I think there's a point you told me that most companies don't really reach a year startup companies. Mm. And in your opinion, like exactly one, why don't most companies? In your opinion, mm. but also how are you able to to push past a year? One, I think one of the reasons why uh, businesses maybe would not survive for a year is the patience to hang in there uh, when you're just starting. Because, you know, if you start with nothing, uh, for a while you will go without anything. Mm. And yet there are opportunities out there for you to go and get something. Mm. So if I am in my law firm, and this month I haven't made any money, but if I went out and got a job, I would be assured of a salary. Mm. So someone thinks to himself, why, why should I stay in this? If, I'm if I can, so many losses. yes, I'm making, I'm not making money, and yet uh, I could go somewhere else and get money. So the patience, the strength to hang in there yeah, and, and wait. Uh, so, so people give up in that instance. Uh, other reason could be uh, maybe you fail to agree with the person you're working with on how maybe to share the money, uh, how to handle the business and how to handle the practice. Mm. And so people find that, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know my partner was like this. I don't like this. I don't like that. Then. Mm. The next thing you know, you can't do business together. Yeah. Or oh, I thought we would share money like this, but they have not agreed on how they will share the money. So, was that something you agreed with your partner before you started? This is how we're going to. Split yeah, the we money? agreed. We agreed for us, uh, our practice. We agreed that it would be a 50-50 arrangement. Whatever we 
earn mm. uh, would be shared out equally. So we, but how we do both you, find no problem with that. How did you discuss the business side of things? Because you want to be a profitable business, but you also want to be a growing business. Mm. So did you bring in like a business consultant or do you, did you just use as if common sense to say, this is how we're going to grow? Because if you split up everything 50-50, what goes back into the farm to develop the farm or something like that? No, well, you see, we have uh, people who have gone ahead of us yeah, in this trade, yeah. So we are not reinventing the wheel. Mm. There are people who we consider as mentors, uh, who are willing to actually share uh, a lot of information with us on how they have managed their law firms, mm. how they began, and how they have reached where they are. So we did consult, and they advised us, mm. this is how you're going to do this. Uh, when you get money, uh, this is how you're going to treat the money yeah? You, yeah we are Christians so when we get money we know that the first thing we do is get tithe yeah, yeah? Uh, God has to have a portion uh, of our money yeah? that a tenth the, mat, the farm has to survive so there's a, pers a certain percentage of funds that go to the farm mm -hmm. in terms of investment there is mm -hmm. a percentage for investment and then a percentage for running the farm Mm. And then a percentage for us as equity partners, uh, which we share equally. So that 50-50 is that part that is available oh, for boy. sharing, what not can you the say, entire sum. What can you say is one of um, some, big, some challenges you're faced pr practicing? Like having your own practice, number one, but also practicing in Uganda. Um, one, practicing <laughs> law in Uganda is uh, the clientele mm. that a uh, starting law firm attracts, a uh, clientele that don't appreciate the value of the work that you do. Professional services. Yes, yeah. professional services and payment for the services for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you find that uh, many clients would negotiate if they would as much as possible if preferably if you could do the work for free they, they would, would do it they would prefer that yeah <laughs> so you find that you have a service you offer it at this figure but someone someone is not willing to give you what it is worth yeah, yeah. they prefer or oh, and secondly practicing in uganda is there are many lawyers that have gone ahead of us that mm. have uh, have spoiled the reputation of, of a lawyer. Lawyers uh, are liars. Lawyers are liars is what lawyers are cheats. So you find that you are you are not only proving yourself but also trying to redeem the profession. Yeah, yeah? that people come to you many times with with some doubt, thinking, okay probably this lawyer is going to cheat me but I hope he doesn't cheat me so much mm. yeah uh, hopefully he will do the work that I am going to give him you see that is the reputation that people have hopefully I can trust him uh, hopefully the other side if it's in litigation hopefully the other side uh, you know will not corrupt him mm. number three practicing in Uganda there are many offices that we deal with uh, where if you do not finance someone for to do work that they are paid to do, mm. your client is not going to get a timely service. Mm. So, uh, and, and, and your client doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to know that maybe results are delaying because the lawyer is not giving someone money. No, the client wants a solution. And for many of us who are Christians, that that is not an easy thing for us to go through. Yeah, mm. that I have to give someone some ten thousand, some twenty thousand uh, to take my file to the next step, mm. which like ordinarily, a clerk or something. yes, yeah. which ordinarily uh, this person is is paid to do. Yeah, but you have to incentivize them. I mean, the corruption uh, to the is same. just too much. The other bit about the question uh, was uh, practicing for for us. Mm. Uh, one of the challenges has been, of course, uh, those times where getting retainer clients mm. is uh, 
What does a retainer client mean? A retainer client means uh, someone you have agreed on to constantly be giving legal services throughout the year. Yeah. And uh, they are going to pay you either monthly or quarterly or half yearly or annually. Yeah. Yeah, but you have them, uh, you're their lawyer and you're going to be, they're going to be giving you work to do mm -hmm. uh, more than just a one-off. Yeah. Yeah, so you have you have agreed a retainer, you have an, a retainer agreement mm -hmm. yeah. for a fee. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, you could say it's constant income that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So to have those kinds of uh, clients is, is, is after you have, you know, uh, created a certain reputation in the market, uh, been around in the market for some time to mm. un to earn trust, reputation, uh, as well. reputation mm. among the clientele. Mm. Is number two concerning the practice here is hanging in there when you when you seem to see the light at the end of the tunnel but never reaching the light. Mm. Uh, it's it's not an easy thing. Yeah. So you mean like financially? Financially, uh, achieving a breakthrough. For us uh, as a business, it's not something you invest in today mm. and next month you have returns. Mm. It takes a while. It takes, it so takes, it doesn't in take this months. Year, have you guys, years. as in have you made a profit like from the initial investment that was put in you? For after our first one year, not yet. Okay. We haven't yet, uh, we call it broken even yeah yes it hasn't yet happened for us we mm. still have a lot uh, we are still in, actually investing in the farm at a, to a certain extent yeah. uh, because there are things you keep doing over and over again uh, branding you can continuously do that and I've noticed that uh, um, you're not in the same office where, where you started because when you started you are on Buganda Road yes we moved offices uh, again, as a starting business, one of the strategies you look at is are you earning what you're spending? Mm. Yeah. So if you're, you're spending a certain amount of money uh, on rent. How much were you spending on rent? Uh, we were paying $1,026. Depending on uh, how the dollar rate is doing, you be spending about maybe 3.7 million Uganda shillings per month. Uh, per month. Uh -huh. So so probably about 11 million for three months. And yeah. then you moved to something more affordable. That's like how much? So now we moved uh, to a place where we can pay 1.5 million shillings. About 400? About 400 dollars. Per month? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it you, did, you, that, did that affect your business, having to move location? It didn't affect our business, and, and it is one of the considerations as to why we decided to move, because none of our clients was our client because of where we were. Mm. So we were not going to lose any client because of where we are moving to, because our clients would find us, would call us and ask us where we are located, and so they would come. Yeah. So what is the future? of your farm like what future plans do you have for your farm the future of the farm uh, for me is uh, becoming bigger what does bigger mean because because that is what uh, the market requires now in terms of uh, in terms of partners in terms of associates uh, having a bigger team is what i mean so you want uh, to bring in more partners yeah bring in more partners and mm, bring associates. in more associates because mm. um, that is what uh, clients look out for mm. that if uh, the partner is not available my work can still be done mm. or if this partner is not available mm. there is another partner that I can contact and can be able to uh, give me a solution for and my what issue. is the goal of this what is the, what is the goal of adding more partners. Then. Increasing partnerships mm. also means increasing practice. By that I mean if uh, Seguia Paul, his major practice is land transactions mm. and uh, I need to get another partner whose major practice is not land transaction mm. but maybe 
um, banking, I mean, hmm. banking and, and, and finance, yeah. Uh, so there you've reached into another... So, yeah, so you've expanded aspect. into another stream uh, of business. That, that will propel us into other goals of how we can become financially uh, more powerful. When you've increased your practice, you will increase your revenues, you will increase your reputation, you become, you become uh, you know, better placed okay. in the yeah. market. And what's the craziest moment you've ever had in a courtroom, which you can share, and it's not illegal? Crazy moment happened in court. I was in court, but I was not the lawyer proceeding before the judge. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's this tough judge, and many lawyers know he's a tough judge. Mm. Uh, he comes into the courtroom, <clears throat> and the lawyer presenting his case begins, and he... The prosecutor? The plaintiffs. The plaintiffs. Uh -huh. The plaintiffs. Uh, the plaintiff's lawyer begins of uh, presenting his case and he asks court for an adjournment because he was not ready to proceed mm. because there are certain things that had not been filed. Mm. And On the side of the defense? On the, no, on the side of them as the plaintiffs. Okay. And the judge blasts this lawyer mm. and says... I am not going to adjourn this matter. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you filed? I gave, I've given you almost a year mm -hmm. and you have not had these things filed. He said, case dismissed. Just like that. He threw and the case out of court. He threw the case out of court and he tells the lawyer, case dismissed. Where are your clients? His clients had not yet arrived. I think they were caught up in a jam. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he tries to explain. He says, my lord, uh, if you could give me... He said, the, the judge said, case dismissed. So the lawyer continues to explain as the judge is noting down something. As the lawyer is still pleading, the judge closes the case. He throws the file to the clerk and says, next case, case dismissed. And the lawyer looks at everyone in court like, help me. Can someone help me here? My case is being dismissed. And, and I think that that was crazy because many times lawyers like to adjourn matters uh, without... To keep things. Yeah, to, to keep... those are coming right on top of those lights? I imagine so. I imagine You think so. they are working right now? I, that one I wouldn't. We are being watched. I wouldn't Let's wave to the police. <laughs> As we conclude, I want you to give three um, words of advice to our audience in terms of... As, let's say there's a young lawyer who has just started work or someone who has just started their law firm and they're just scratching their heads of why did I enter this mm. or someone who's just starting their business and they're facing some difficulties or don't even know where to start. Mm. What are three things you would give? One for the law firm, one for the business. Uh, for the law firm, one, know what you want mm. and pursue it. Mm. Pursue it. You need to get uh, to who are your advisors? Uh, follow their advice and 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 hang in there mm. uh, for the long haul you know mm. don't do don't do it uh, for quick quick profiting uh, mm. this is this is a long time investment mm. it might not profit you in the first month it might not profit you in the first or in the second year mm. uh, the idea is get to know that you're on the right path mm. and then you hang in there and, and again, for the business, is more of what is what is your strategy? What research have you put in your strategy, and how much your strategy will work? Mm. Yeah, have you have you invested time in you know research in studying the market, knowing what works and what doesn't work? Don't just invest in a thing that will fail. Mm. Yeah, uh, have some research, some authentic research done before you actually invest in a business. Thank you, Segi, for um, joining us to this ride. And thank you so much for your words of wisdom. I hope you guys have learned a lot on this ride with us. And just continue to comment um, about what he has said. I'll put his information down where you can find him. So we thank him for joining us. Um, 
and also uh, just continue to subscribe to the channel and more episodes will be coming your way. And there you have it. A young man jack of all trades from a lawyer to a businessman. What it takes for you to run a successful law firm in Uganda. Persistence, having a goal, having mentors, but also having other ambitions such as his business. As the famous painter and sculptor Pablo Picasso once said, I'm always doing what I cannot do so that with time I can learn what to do. So thank you for watching another episode of Ride Along. Please always remember to subscribe, share and like this video. Let us learn more from these different entrepreneurs and professionals of how to run our businesses, how to run our professions here in Uganda. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.